Hello, Sea Dragons. We are taking a look today at To My Dear and Loving Husband by Anne Bradstreet. Our focus, again, will be rhyme scheme, figurative language, descriptive words, topics, and themes. And so, let's take a quick look. The poem reads, If ever two were one, then surely we. If ever man were loved by wife, then thee. If ever wife was happy in a man, compare with me, ye women, if you can. I prize thy love more than whole mines of gold, or all the riches that the East doth hold. My love is such that rivers cannot quench, nor aught but love from thee give recompense. Thy love is such I can no way repay. The heavens reward thee manifold, I pray. Then while we live in love, let's so persevere, that when we live no more, we may live ever. And so this is really a very straightforward poem in which she is um, expressing her love for her husband. Um, it is written in a style that's traditional for the day. She, again, she's a Puritan woman. Um, if you notice, if you listen to the first line read aloud, if ever two were one, then surely we. It's written in what we call iambic pentameter, which was a very popular um, type of metric in the time that she was writing in the 17th century. And in by writing in iambic pentameter, it shows us that she was aware of popular writing styles in England. She was actually born in England and then moved to, um, I think, Boston. And that she's cognizant of wanting to kind of compete with the classical male poets of her day. So writing in iambic pentameter is kind of a sign of being cultured. It also, the sound of iambic pentameter replicates the human heartbeat, which is, again, perfectly appropriate for what is essentially a love poem. And so when talking about iambic pentameter, let's now move to a rhyme scheme. So we see we, the man, can gold hold, quench, recompense, repay, pray, persevere, and ever. And so again, if we are looking for rhyme scheme, A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, and F, F. A couple of these don't rhyme exactly. Quench and recompense, it's what we call forced rhyme or slant rhyme. And then persevere and ever. We get the idea that maybe persevere could be pronounced persever. Again, we're talking about 400 years ago, so the pronunciation may have been a little different. Um, so if we look at what you're looking at in your assignment, what does the last line of the poem mean? We see that the last line of the poem really pulls it all together, um, really underscores the theme of the poem. After death, we will still share our love in heaven. And so she says, um, if ever two were one, then surely we, if ever man were loved by wife, then thee, if ever wife was happy in a man, compare with me, ye women, if you can. So she is kind of playfully challenging her husband and the reader saying, I doubt you can find a woman who is as happy with her husband as I am with you. Um, we see, let me move over to this screen so I can annotate a little bit better. We were talking about figurative langu language. We see that here in the first line, if ever two were one, then surely we. Looking at the two of them as one, one being or one entity or one unit. Um, and then we see some great hyperbole in these three lines here. I prize your love more than whole mines of gold or all the riches that the East doth hold. My love is such that rivers cannot quench. So remember, hyperbole is exaggeration. And so she's telling us that she loves her husband. Um, I'm sorry, she's saying that she prizes the love that her husband feels for her more than she would value whole mines of gold or all of the riches that the East doth hold. When we're talking about the East, we're talking about Asia. 
continent of Asia and the 17th century belief that Asia was full of um, gold and riches and valuable spices. She goes on to say that my love is such that rivers could not quench. So she talks about how valuable her husband's love for her is. And she says then in return that her love for him is such that rivers cannot quench, almost like it's a, a fire that cannot be um, put out by all of the water and all of the rivers. And then she goes on to say, nor nothing but love from thee give recompense. I changed the language a little bit to make it more modern so it would be easier to follow. So the only thing that she wants in payment for the love that she feels for her husband is that he love her in return. And she says that in and of itself is so valuable that she couldn't even repay it. And she hopes, and this is where in the last three lines, we began to really clearly see that Puritan message. Um, she hopes that the heavens will reward him many times over. And so with that goal in mind, she's asking that the two of them continue to live as this model Puritan couple so that in the afterlife, they will live in heaven and enjoy and experience eternal life.